Hello everyone and welcome to the NARSA weekly update for the week commencing Monday the 1st of August 2022 August already folks wow it's Gary here again and how great is it to get back to competitive action long 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 overdue and despite the early kickoff and the, the usual hustle and bustle and kind of somewhat lack of entertainment of a game against Livy on that dreadful artificial pitch. It was just great to be back in the thick of competitive action again. Bring it on. One down, 37 to go. I'm going to start off by yet another episode of what Gaz got wrong last week. I kind of thought I was beyond that, but anywho, when I was talking about the closed doors friendly against Queen's Park last week, I incorrectly said that we had also drawn against them in the second round of the League Cup, which of course is incorrect. It was Queen of the South that we were drawn against and I guess I guess I just got my Queens mixed up in all the excitement of what was happening last week. So whoops! 100% it is Queen of the South that we are playing on Tuesday the 30th of August with a 2.45pm Eastern Standard Time kickoff, 7.45pm in the UK. And more about that on the weekly update in four weeks' time. But I'm glad I cleared that one up and thanks to Andy Carey for listening and thanks for pointing that one out to me. I'm sure he does it with absolute glee and delight every single time. Anywho, on to the game segment for this week with just the one game, of course, this last week, and that was Saturday's opening match against Livingston and what turned out to be a pretty hard-fought 2-1 victory for Rangers. Uh, we made a, a very bright start in the first five or so minutes, then uh, gave away a free kick, which kind of, I don't know, halfway in their half, which results in a seemingly somewhat harmless punt up the park by their goalie, which goes completely unchallenged by... Barisic and, and I think maybe Lundstrom was there as well and then Suter set the scene for basically his entire game by being nowhere near their big striker who admittedly was a handful throughout the game to be fair just to lob it over McLaughlin in his very 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 bright pink goalie strip so 1-0 in 5 or 6 minutes it's just incredible start to the game and lots of fouls in the first half and, and a fair few bookings. I can't actually remember how many bookings there were. But in the in the second half, I dreaded this happening. And at the start of the second half, you could just see the time wasting starting. And, and you know, we are continuing to try and play the game. And they're just taking their time and taking their time and taking their time as we are continuing to try and apply, you know, pressure. And then we scored a perfectly good equaliser uh, to get Cholak off the, the mark for the domestic season. That was incredibly ruled offside. The first time I seen it, I didn't think it was offside. And of course, every time seeing it since then, it wasn't offside. You know, and that's that's just one of these things that VAR, whenever VAR's coming in, that will hopefully help take that one away. But as I say, we kept plugging away and continued to apply pressure. And thankfully, Geo puts Suter and does, quite frankly, out of, of his misery and brought on James Sands. And at the same substitution, also brought on Arfield for for Kamara. And just five minutes later, I think that was like 67 minutes or so, something like that, then Kent, who just did what Kent does, he just never gives up the guy. He just keeps trying and trying and trying the entire game, even if he's not having his best game. And I thought he did he did relatively well on, on Saturday. <clears throat> he cuts inside, puts a brilliant... It's, you know, curving ball in for the superb Scotty Arfield glancing header to give us the equaliser in about 70 odd, 72 minutes, something like that, 73. And then we just, uh, we kept going and we got a, a, a free kick just about a minute or so later. And then up steps Captain Fantastic James Tavernier to rifle a very well worked free kick in at the back of the net. You've seen the two guys on the wall line just moving out of the way just at the last minute. Just a superb free kick. And Tav, once again, is off and running for the season in terms of goal threat. And someone said to me after the game, I can't remember who it was now, um, that, that Tav is now only four goals behind Mark Haitley's total goals scored for Rangers. And I know that you know this, but Tav's a right back. And that's just a fantastic scoring record. You know, Just incredible. The guy's getting more and more and more valuable as each game passes, it seems. And we, we really as I say, dug in superbly well uh, the entire game and credit to the team for doing that. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but thankfully 
uh, this time it did work and, and we got our just desserts with the win and the three points to take back to Ibrox positives from the game I thought Tillman was superb brilliant when he, when he came on uh, James Sands I think was the only guy that won a header against their big striker the whole game but he, he certainly filled in a gap and, and gave us a wee bit more calm um, in the second half when he came on and, and Giovanni's subs really worked well and, and to be fair uh, to Giovanni over his time with us I don't think there's been a time that I can recall off the top of my head anyway that his substitutions haven't worked in some way to positively influence a game that, that we've played he it, it, it just literally knows what he's doing and reads a game very well understands what firepower he has on the park what firepower he has on the bench what's working what's not working and just seems to to know what to do to um, to give us that little bit of extra impetus of what the substitutions are supposed to do quite frankly so long may that continue giovanni thank you very very much for doing that some negatives that first goal that was reminiscent of Steven Gerrard's first two years of, of defending with a big punt up the park for their goal and we have no idea what to do to defend it you know just so so reminiscent of his first uh, couple of seasons and it gave me a real trip down memory lane not one that I was really asking for or wanted so let's cut that garbage out as we as we move forward and, and hopefully we won't see that sort of junk again on the referee watch uh, Don Robertson uh, what to say he was consistent the entire day I'll, I'll give him that the the bookings I think he got the bookings right in, in the first half he should have um, of course sent off uh, their red headed clown Kankar in, in the first half he was just a wrecking ball on, on Scott Wright until he got subbed off in, a, in and around the 20, a 35 minute mark or something like that which was incidentally immediately after he should have received the second yellow. It was a very clear foul. They have a wee bit of a confab, him and the captain and stuff like that. I don't know what the ref says. I've seen the ref, you know, visually saying, be careful, be careful after that foul. It's a yellow card all day long, every single day of the week. And he bottled it on that for whatever reason. And then he gets um, the, to make the substitution. And then they continue the game with 11 men when it should have been 10. So because of that and... And this kind of isn't his fault, 100%, but the, the offside goal for Cholak, the, the linesman had a nightmare with that one. How he could possibly see Cholak being offside from any angle he was at uh, is just ridiculous. But that's the linesman's fault in that one. The referee has to go with what the linesman would say because the linesman, in theory, should have the better angle for that. So all of that said, Don Robertson gets a 6 out of 10 for the first league game of the season. Two games coming up this week, starting with tomorrow's crucial UEFA Champions League third round qualifier away to, I'm going to give it a go this week, Union San Gilois, USG, something like that. I think I, think I maybe nailed it, maybe. Uh, and that's a 2.45 uh, Eastern Standard Time kickoff tomorrow. That's the, the Tuesday, the, the 2nd of, of August. And that's a 7.45 p.m. UK kickoff time. And I just I took a, a peek at the results as I was, I was writing my my notes for today and and they won their second league game this past Friday and have now started their season with a draw and a win so this I believe you have to believe this one is going to be a real toughie for us for a number of reasons partly because we don't really know a hell of a lot about the team and partly because it's only our second competitive game of the season and with a whole bunch of new signings settling in it's that age-old problem that we faced many times over the years with European qualifiers being so early in, in the season or prior to the season on some occasions if we hadn't have blown our lead atop the Premiership table last season we'd be looking forward to another month of domestic only football in preparation for the group stages but it just didn't work out that way so we need to get on with this put on a good showing and, and put this team away I'm really not sure how you feel about this one uh, quite honestly it's it's not I'm not overly excited about it but I'm not I'm not dreading it either I, I, I don't know I don't quite know I'm a wee bit confused about how I feel about this one I guess uh, because of the unknown so we'll see what tomorrow brings but as I was saying throughout most of the knockout stages of last season's incredible Europa League run we just need a result over there that we can bring home to Ibrox in a week's time to give us a realistic chance of progressing into the next round so let's go with that again and that's all I ask of the team on this occasion the second game is at home to newly promoted Kamarnock on Saturday the 6th of August with this one being a 10am 
Eastern Standard Time kickoff. That's 3 p.m. on a Saturday UK time, which is kind of cool. And with this being the Ibrox opener for the season, I you have to expect there's going to be a bumper crowd and a bit of a party atmosphere and hopefully a really good strong showing against them to set a marker down that Ibrox will be a fortress again this season for all visiting teams. I'll take a nice healthy 4 or 5 nil scoreline. That would be kind of handy just to kind of keep ourselves going in the win column. So here's hoping for that one. For our TV, it would appear that we got off to a flyer this past weekend with no issues reported from anywhere that I saw anyway, which is which is great news. Alan McWatt and I did indeed meet with David Melvin from RTV last Tuesday morning at our time here uh, to discuss the season logistics and payments and, and the like. And, and I have to say it was... It was one of the more productive calls that we've had in quite some time uh, with with both parties really on the same page in terms of where we're at, what's happening next and what we can expect from each other as the, as the season progresses. Not that the, I don't want to give you the wrong impression here, not that the previous calls have been a downer or, or you know, unproductive or anything like that, but this call just felt a little bit more partnershipy and back to the relationship that we used to enjoy with, with RTV in previous years. So long may that continue every club but now has their new voucher which will last the club for the entire season and if there are individual members within your club requiring individual vouchers please do let alan and i know and we'll take care of that when we change to the vouchers this year as last season it was full access you got with the individual vouchers this year because the technology is getting more robust at the rtv side they have restricted both the club and the individual voucher accesses to be only for live games and on-demand games as well. So you're not going to get access to every single thing like all the, you know, Rangers Mind and all the interviews in the background and, and anything else content-wise that Rangers TV are putting together. If you want to access that stuff, you can go and subscribe to Rangers TV on your own and, and get access to that stuff. But it's just going to be the games only um, from this point forward. And I'm in full support of that as well. So hopefully that's not too much of a hardship for anyone. For shout outs, firstly for this week, I'd like to let everyone know about um, some work that we've had going on in the background this past wee while with the Winnipeg Rangers Supporters Club. As some of you might know, a number of seasons back, the, the lads at Winnipeg had to close their doors in terms of being able to show the, the, the Rangers games as a club, but have still maintained their membership with Narsa since then and, and also continue to support us in other ways with Alec Black being the Northwest Director and on the for a couple of terms at least a couple of terms on the narsa executive and uh, other members supporting the conventions you know as 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 and when they could as well so still very active in the the narsa community and you may remember when when i was recount, recounting my journey uh, to and from seville back in in may june time there that i'd mentioned that i met a couple of bears in the bar in the calgary airport and one of them was from edmonton and another one was from Winnipeg and, and a fella just joined us as I was leaving who worked up, up north in the oil sands in Alberta here as well. Anyway, the guy from Winnipeg is called, and I hope you're sitting down for this one, the guy from Winnipeg is called Michael Patrick Kelly. Yeah, yeah, you heard me correctly. I'm not going to repeat it. But anyway, Mike and, I, Mike and I kept in touch and he was, and he has since then, actually even that day uh, when we were chatting, he showed a really keen interest and desire to kind of resurrect a Rangers presence in Winnipeg. So we dialogued a wee bit uh, since and, and that culminated with a call uh, with Mike and myself, uh, Brian Campbell and Tom Chisholm from, from Winnipeg RSC this past Friday where we kind of strategised on what next steps could look like and to get the, you know, the band back together, so to speak. And the first, the first part of that, of getting them back together, is they now have a social media presence with their Twitter and Instagram handles being at Winnipeg RSC. So that's for both Twitter and Instagram. And their new club email address is Winnipeg RSC at gmail.com. So we'll get those updated on the website this week sometime, hopefully, and you'll likely start to see some activity from them over the next wee while as we as we get to kind of tag and share some of their content um, over time. And they don't have a premise right now, but that too is going to be a bit of a work in progress for the guys over the coming months to see how and, how and when it goes. And it's just great to see the passion and desire for our great club that is still burning very, very strong, even under 
very difficult circumstances and I'd like to thank uh, Mike and the entire Winnipeg Rangers Supporters Club for their efforts in, in making this a uh, possibility. Who knew that a chance encounter in a pub in an airport in Calgary would lead to the efforts that have been put in since then? It just really does go to show that we truly are the people. That we really are. This past Saturday evening, I got together with some good pals here in Calgary and we managed a, a WhatsApp video call to basically toast the dads uh, with, a, with a few pals uh, from, from back home as well. And what this was, was uh, most of us on the call, apart from some random Celtic fan who had no business being there, and I'll blame Matthew McDonald for that one, but uh, most of us have, have lost our dads at some point in, in the past wee while, and, and we're all joined together by our love of, of Rangers. And, and we're, all, we're all in our 30s and 40s, so it feels a wee bit unfair, uh, to be perfectly honest. That's my own personal opinion anyway, that, that we are now with, without our dads. But uh, the point of it uh, was to toast the dads, just to kind of make something point of it, and also to finish off the Rangers Special Edition 55 Whiskey that, that we had used to toast my dad with back in June before his funeral service. And and we used that uh, the, the remainder of that to say a special goodbye to uh, to our dads and, and despite it being around about it was i think it was about half past midnight back home the call was actually quite civilized and we got to say a few words to toast the, toast the old boys and uh, hold back the tears a wee bit so i just wanted to acknowledge that on the shout outs this week that it was a, it was a really a cool experience to be part of so thanks very much to to jamie to the two davies to matthew and to john for taking part in that it meant a lot to me personally and i hope it did for you too I enjoyed it so much that I was basically crashed out uh, on the couch about an hour or so after the call, which in context is kind of like half past 6pm here. I might have had a wee bit too much of the whiskey, if I'm being honest, but uh, my old man wouldn't have wanted it any other way, I'm sure. Or at the very least, he wouldn't have been surprised by my snooze fest early in the evening. <laughs> made it home safe and sound there. Leo made sure of that. But a really cool experience to be part of. And thanks again to the guys for, uh, for, for being part of it. And finally, on the shout-outs for this week, I wanted to uh, send out a special Get Well Soon message for former NARSA Northeast director Jim Maxwell, who is a member of the Toronto Number no. 1 club out there in, in Ontario, who has been battling with, with rectal cancer since October last year. And in December, he'd started chemo and radiation treatment every day for, for around about a month. And, and at the end of March, he had surgery, and he's now uh, going through um, eight sessions of chemo every, every two weeks. Uh, but the chemo is not being very, very kind to him and he's in and out of hospital with some kidney troubles and, and things like that. So he hasn't got through all of the sessions just yet. His, his wife, Norma, has, has been in touch and, and said that hopefully next week he'll have his fourth session, but that he's just been very sick. He's lost a lot of weight. And, and at the end of all this, they're, they're hoping, of course, that everything's going to work out OK. And uh, that maybe at some point later this year, they'll get home for a holiday. So it looks like a really, really positive prognosis, which is great but man oh man it's just an absolutely horrendous situation for Jim and Norma and, the, and their family and friend circle um, as well. We did have a wee bit of a, a, communica a communication breakdown previously which is why I hadn't mentioned this prior to now but I got the okay to, to mention it today and I'm, I'm more than delighted to be able to do so. So Jim from myself and everyone at NARSA all the very best to you on your ongoing battle with, with this and you're a warrior my friend, and I'm really looking forward to seeing you in Toronto in June, where we can grab a few beers and have a proper catch-up. And if there's anything you need from myself or the Narsa family, please don't ever hesitate to reach out to such a horrible, horrible disease, that. For our convention update for this week, for Narsa 2023, I can officially confirm that it is 318 days until Toronto Midtown hosts the biggest Rangers bash of the year. And in a week's context that's just over 45 weeks to go we did have some dialogue with the, the hotel this last week as they start to staff up for our ongoing planning efforts and and we are we're typically assigned 
two sometimes three um you know key 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 points of contact for us and, and it, usually it's an operations manager type of resource who is our main point of contact for pretty much everything that we do between now and the event then we get a catering and banqueting manager who we deal with a wee bit later in the process just to start to finalize and firm up what the meal is going to look like for the walter smith memorial grand banquet on the saturday and we also have a reservations manager who's our main point of contact for figuring out you know how things are going and in terms of room sales and bookings and any challenges that people may have or whatever so we have those people assigned now and we liaise with these resources at, at various points during the lead up to and during the event to bring it all together for our guests come showtime so i think we're in good shape thus far and really looking forward to our kickoff meeting to get things moving in earnest i'm hoping that's going to be maybe this week or, or possibly next week i'm not 100 percent sure i need to go back and check my emails on that i also owe rosie ratter from our official travel partner the holiday and flight center a response on our ongoing dialogue and i'm going to actually get onto that as soon as i finish this recording tonight it's amazing how the days and weeks can just zip by when you've got lots of plates spinning and that's kind of where it's at right now so we are still targeting getting the travel packages together and on sale this month sometime so that we uh that we can we can keep things moving and i think we're i think we're still on time uh that you know or on track time wise effort for that as well so hopefully get moving and have a wee bit more to share about that for next week and we also have a follow-up meeting with the folks from toronto midtown uh, Rangers Supporters Club on Tuesday the 16th of this month where we'll get into a bit more detail on the planning efforts that we started talking about last week there so more to follow on that after we've had that chat as well on the communications front for this past week a really busy one this past week as I, as I was kind of doing my research and getting things together it was very quiet for about two or three weeks there <laughs> and then all of a sudden bang and there's, there's tons and tons of stuff to to, to go through so i'll get through it as quickly as i can here a rangers announced last week a fan engagement update when they said rangers is pleased to confirm details of several new supporter focused initiatives that aim to put fans at the heart of the club fan engagement is critical to rangers success and the rangers board are committed to driving best in class fan engagement experience and ensuring Supporters' voices are heard at every level. Rangers SLO Greg Marshall, who has recently returned from Frankfurt after attending the European Football Fans Congress, said, Following our experiences in Europe and viewing what many other elite European sides have in place, we have plans to expand and grow our fan engagement department and improve this crucial link we have with our fans. The increased emphasis and investment in fan engagement will include several exciting new roles solely dedicated to ensuring that supporters' voices are heard alongside new and renewed initiatives to quantify feedback to inform to the to inform key decisions taken at the club there's some bad english in this article here it's not me i promise in recent years the world has changed but rangers supporters have remained loyal and we must evolve our processes so that the connection between club and our global support continues to thrive i'll leave it at that in terms of there's a wee bit more to the article and it gives you a wee bit of an idea i'll put the link in the blurb for tonight it gives you an idea of some of the areas that they're, they're looking to actually get going on immediately but the last part there so that the connection between club and our global support continues to thrive when i read the article this was the first i heard of it so as soon as i read it i reached out to, to greg marshall to see where narsa could help the club from an overseas fans perspective we were hoping to get the chance to chat today actually so that i could provide an update on the pod this evening but he wasn't 100% sure when he'd be heading to Belgium for, for tomorrow's game. So we have now just agreed, actually not long before recording, that we're going to chat on Friday evening, uh, evening his time and kind of afternoon Brian and I's time here. And, and then we'll see where the conversation takes us. Kind of like I was saying last week, these surprise announcements... You know, I, I kind of get what the club's doing. You know, you, you don't hear about anything until we're ready to, to communicate it. Nothing's getting leaked out. I completely appreciate the confidentiality part of that. 100% I do. But sometimes we can dilute the messaging on these if they come out just as a surprise. And, and the messaging on this one to me is the Rangers are taking fan engagement very seriously. And that's a great thing. So that's a very, very positive thing overall. I'd just like to see a wee bit more of a proactive communications approach from the club on the exciting stuff. And that's exactly what I said last week. This could have been rolled out with a wee bit more of a fanfare, I'm sure. And my worry is that we'll end up just inadvertently missing something important 
as we don't get engaged on anything proactively now at all from the club and the announcements could land at a time when we're all kind of busy and we miss the opportunity to either be involved or even just see it sometimes if the news is coming thick and fast and that loses us the opportunity, which is the most important part, to help the club. So we will try and chat with Greg this week, as I say, on Friday and see where we go from there and, and more to follow when I know more. So this past while, I've talked about the Rangers 72 film and which tells, of course, the epic story of the 1972 Barcelona U European uh, Cup Winners Cup winning team and the fact that I'd asked the club about international release dates and logistics. This morning I got an email and there was also an article on the website saying that it's now available uh, on iTunes and Google Play outside of the UK and Ireland and the, the message I got on the email today was saying it's now available in Canada so they had managed to have the system kind of make it geographically appropriate to me as well which is kind of cool. So that is a great thing. I'm going to try and watch it later this week now that I can source it legally and I will provide a wee bit of a a movie critic report for you next week and on the memorabilia collateral that I have been talking about for a few weeks now I definitely will get organised on that and then announce it next week for absolute certain I know I've said that before um, but the, the fellow reached out to me again to say hey what's happening it's just been with the start of the season and getting RTV organised and keeping things plugging away on both post Vegas and pre uh, Toronto Midtown it's just been a wee bit busy on that front but I'll get on to that now that we're kind of up and running in earnest in, in, we, in, in the season here so the club also announced that last week that George Taylor has joined the board of directors of Rangers International Football Club PLC as a director of the company and if you've seen the announcement on the website that's almost literally what it said <laughs> if they were going for a shortest announcement or club statement uh, of the year award I think they would have won it with that one because that's literally what it said but most likely uh, or most sorry we'll, we'll likely know that, that George is, is one of the three um, famed three bears who helped wrestle control back of our club back in the day and also continue to provide financial and other support to the club in the years since so I think that's a great appointment for a real blue nose so congratulations to George and the, and the board on this positive appointment. The club was also honoured last week with a civic reception and the article on the website said tonight Rangers Football Club was honoured with a civic reception from Glasgow City Council at the City Chambers in recognition of the club's contribution to the city over the last 150 years. Guests from Rangers history both past and present as well as politicians and figures from public life gathered for another significant milestone in the club's 150th year. I'll put a link to the article on tonight's blurb as well and because it contains a whole bunch of pictures from the event and it looked like it was a great time, it looked like it was really uh, really well done, quite honestly. And, and I have to say, what a stunning building that really is, and certainly from the views of, of the photographs that, that were taken. Uh, it, looks, it looks great. So yeah, again, you know, we, we find out about it just kind of basically on, on the day sort of thing. I don't know, I don't know, I'm getting a wee bit uneasy about all this sort of stuff. Anyway, nine in a row captain and friend of NASA, Richard Goff, is back home right now and is conducting a very special Ibrook Stadium tour this coming Wednesday, which will be a fantastic experience for whomever gets to attend, I'm sure. There, there is a a link in the article to go and book it and I, but I actually went to, I clicked the, the link to see how much it was going to cost so I could tell everyone tonight but when I clicked it the actual one on the 3rd of August at 6.30pm UK time wasn't listed so I don't know if that means it's sold out or if there's some other sort of techno glitch happening or going on I'm not 100% sure but um, yeah anyway so maybe it may be sold out already and, and, and some very lucky people will get a chance to be walked through the hallowed halls of Ibrox with the captain himself. And speaking of, of the captain, our partners at Five Stars also have organised a signing session uh, with, with Richard this coming Friday, August the 5th, in a similar type of gig to, to what they did with Craig Moore and Barry Ferguson back on the 12th of July. So if you have some gear you want signed by the great man himself, you can visit the Five Star site and take it from there. I did a very cursory glance at the five star sites earlier um, to, to try and get a link actually to put it in the blog but I couldn't find that particular event so it was really quick so I assume that you, when you go and you, st you search around you'll be able to find it I just couldn't quite put my, my hands on it when I visited it earlier in part four of the folks who support encourage 
tolerate and create space for uh, you know and work on NASA related things with your NARSA executive members, I have to tell you that your NARSA executive who they, they've kind of basically the ones that are left have left me kind of flapping in the wind this week, despite me calling each of them out by name to say, I need this information by recording time, please. Now, I'm certainly not going to publicly name and shame Alan McWhart, Alec Grant, Fraser Muir or Billy Ferguson on this pod because that's not how we roll here. But I will keep on at these guys this week and we'll hopefully have something to share next week. And I'd like to put a special thanks out to Alan for getting me all excited and believing that his content was coming today, only for him to say, actually, nah, it's not when I asked him for it a wee bit later this afternoon. So because of Alan specifically, that'll do it this week, my friends. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to listen. (laughs) And please do share it with whomever you think might enjoy it. The more listeners, the better. Until next week, two very, very crucial games for our great club this week. And here's to two victories in each of those games to keep things motoring along. Until next week, take care. All the very best, folks. Cheerio.